I have with me here the latest budget IEM from EPZ, which is this EPZ Tipsy here. Price at uh, 88 US dollar, as you can see here, listed in Linsol Audio just recently. This uh, EPZ Tipsy, or the full name being EPZ X Tipsy Star One, quite a handful, but I'm just going to call it EPZ Tipsy for the review purpose. So this is a single dynamic driver, as you can see here, all right? And the shell itself, beautiful. Have a look at it, all right? Let's just take a moment to appreciate the beauty of this uh, IEM physically. So it is hard resin, as noted there, and what you're going to find inside, a single dynamic driver constructed of LCP PU dual magnet, 10mm. So pretty much 10mm is the normal standard nowadays. And this is the most interesting part. This is the highest impedance rating which I have seen so far for recent releases of IEM at 64 ohm. Okay, you would notice here, I'd like to declare first that I always use foam tip. And in this instance, I have decided to use my Deconi foam tips here, which uh, fits better to my ear. And the tips also will influence the sort of sound which I'm getting from this EPZ Tipsy. When it comes to driving power, this Tipsy is designed to be highly scalable. One of the reasons that the good thing about higher impedance earphone is that they can right, pair wonderlessly with more powerful partner, especially something like this for VRMS capable Fio BTR15, which I use quite a lot. And also this exceedingly powerful Ovidius B1. I have also tried this Tipsy with my Burson Audio Playmate 2 which is the most powerful thing that I have in my possession right now. And I am happy to say that this thing does not sound shouty, does not sound exhibit any kind of anomalies with the sound itself. It just simply jive well as more power is applied to it. I would categorize this uh, EPZ Tipsy as being a solid V sound curve tuning. So what it means by solid V sound curve tuning. So there is a prominent boosting in the upper frequency, some suppression in the mid-range, and also prominent boosting in the lower frequency. So let's talk about the dynamic presentation itself, the way it presents the sound. Okay, I would classify this Tipsy as being properly tuned with the way it handled the dynamic transient itself. It sounded, you know, proper, clean, and cohesive, coherent, especially considering that this is a single driver. Of course, I would expect it to be coherent. And then most importantly, the tone and the timber balance. It is sounding natural, especially when attached to something which is slightly warmer sounding like this uh, FC6 or even this uh, Ovidius B1 and can be a kind of a bit uh, on the brighter side when attached to something which is uh, flat neutral like this Fio BTR15. Okay, one thing I can tell you is, is that if you love sparkly treble, if you love energetic treble, but not too much. You want something which is, you know, airy and sparkly. Tipsy has it, okay, especially when attached to this, something like this Fio BTR15. So is it bright? No. It is slightly bright compared to warmer sounding IM, but not to a point that I would consider as being offensive. The way it handles the transient on the upper frequency, especially anywhere from upper mid-range all the way to the highest or to the end of the treble itself, the extension itself, the decay is smooth, okay? The decay is crisp. And I would just simply put that if there's any kind of, uh, should I say, uh, critique, I would say that I do not feel that it has that much of air as compared as how I would prefer it, but at least it is crisp and suggests that the extension in the upper frequency is quite good as well. So when we talk about mid-range, and this is something which I would consider as being transparent with the mid-range. I do not hear any kind of coloration with different type of vocals or instrument, especially when I listen to classical, violin sounded like violin. Like, you know, I was able to differentiate between the tone of violin and viola or even hapsichord when listening to Vivaldi or something like that. So despite being V sound curve, this Tip C is surprisingly transparent with the mid-range itself. It is clean. The attack is tidy, the attack is never offensive, it is strong but very well controlled. And let's talk about the lower frequency. Now, 
as I noted earlier, this is a V sound curve. Okay, let me just uh, clarify this word. Despite being bassy, for my taste, for my preference, because typically I always prefer something which is a bit more neutral, right? This is definitely not for bass head, okay? Let me just put it up front, okay? But the good thing about how it presents the bass itself, it is clean, okay? First thing, clean, grips. It is fast and tidy, okay? The balance between mid bass and sub bass is very well defined. Defined. So you're not gonna get something like, you know, prominent in sub bass or prominent in mid bass to a point like, for example, like, usually in Harman Tune IEM, you're gonna hear a lot more of sub bass rather than mid bass or some, you know, very strong V sound profile, you're gonna hear a bit more of mid bass and not so much of, of sub bass. But this one, glad, gladly I would say that handles it very well. So I was able to enjoy something which I would consider as, you know, commanding, impactful, and even uh, very solid with the way it presents the mid bass, especially when it comes to percussion, like the, 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 or even let's say a uh, string bass. And when it comes to the decay stage, I would say that it's kind of a bit slightly roll off, you know, if I am being critical about it, but at least the reason it's being uh, slightly roll off because the way it handles the decay is more towards being crisper rather than smoother. So it is solid all the way from mid bass to sub bass. On the technical aspect, this Tipsy is quite capable as well. First, with the way it handles the macro and micro detail, especially when scaled properly with something like this Hebe FC6. And I was actually, you know, <laughs> really enjoying it. I spent quite a bit of time enjoying this Tipsy with this uh, FC6 because I was able to hear lots of detail, micro and macro detail, as opposed to when attached to this phone, which is not so powerful under one VRMS. And the tuning of this FC6 jive really will well with this uh, Tipsy. And the sound stage itself, all right. I am happy to say that despite being a single dynamic driver, it is more like, you know, focus a bit more on the traditional stereo imaging, but at least it is holographic, it is open and spacious. Please be reminded, as usual, what you see here is not all of them. I just try to squeeze as much as possible within this uh, single screen. And for anything which is under 100 US dollar category with the recent IEM which I have reviewed. Okay, so as you can see there, EPZ Tipsy is pretty much an impressive IEM for the price us, scoring 85 out of 100 overall. And let's just do a quick comparison with the rest, some of the competition here. In particular, I would like to compare it right, a bit more on with this SimGod EA500 or should I say SimGod EA500LM. The reason I want to compare both of them because both of them practically compete one to one with the price, the configuration being single DD and everything. So in the simplest term, I would just simply put it this way. right? EPZ Tipsy offer a bit more of energy, vibrancy to the way it presents the sound. Where else this EA500LM is a bit more relaxed, okay, with the way it presents the sound. So if you are sensitive to something like, you know, brighter upper frequency, perhaps EA500LM is something which you would want. But if you love energetic, sparkly, and vibrant upper frequency, this Tipsy offer a bit more. Just one notch, not too much to a point that you would consider it's being offensive. So because I have spent, you know, between the two of it, and one thing is very evident, this is a stronger V sound curve IEM as well as compared to this uh, EA500LM, which offer a bit more of stronger mid-range as opposed to this. But in contrast, this it also means that a better imaging resolution when it comes to upper frequency and lower frequency as compared to the softer presentation as heard from this EA500LM. And also, let's just compare the two of them against one of the most recent IEM which I have reviewed very recently, which is NDX12. Let me just put it this way. These two, both EA500LM here and this Tip C, definitely not as energetic as how NDX12. So if you need even more commanding presence with the way it presents the sound, the dynamic energy and everything, NDX12 will have it.